The metacentric height is a measurement of the initial static stability of a floating body. It is calculated as the distance between the center of gravity of a ship and its metacenter. A larger metacentric height implies greater initial stability against overturning. Metacentric height also influences the natural period of rolling of a hull, with very large metacentric heights being associated with shorter periods of roll which are uncomfortable for passengers. Hence, a sufficiently high but not excessively high metacentric height is considered ideal for passenger ships. Metacenter When a ship heeled, the center of buoyancy of the ship moves laterally. It may also move up or down with respect to the water line. The point at which a vertical line through the heeled center of buoyancy crosses the line through the original, vertical center of buoyancy is the metacenter. The metacenter remains directly above the center of buoyancy by definition. In the diagram to the right the two BS show the centers of buoyancy of a ship in the upright and heeled condition, and M is the metacenter. The metacenter is considered to be fixed for small angles of heel. However, at larger angles of heel the metacenter can no longer be considered fixed, and its actual location must be found to calculate the ship's stability. The metacenter can be calculated using the formulae. Where Kb is the center of buoyancy, I is the second moment of area of the water plane in meters 4 and V is the volume of displacement in meters 3. Km is the distance from the keel to the metacenter. Stable floating objects have a natural rolling frequency like a weight on a spring, where the frequency is increased as the spring gets stiffer. In a boat, the equivalent of the spring stiffness is the distance called gm, or metacentric height, being the distance between two points, g the center of gravity of the boat and m, which is a point called the metacenter. Metacenter is determined by the ratio between the inertia resistance of the boat and the volume of the boat. Wide and shallow or narrow and deep hulls have high transverse metacenters, and the opposite have low metacenters. The extreme opposite is shaped like a log or round-bottomed boat. Ignoring the ballast, wide and shallow or narrow and deep means the ship is very quick to roll and very hard to overturn and is stiff. A log-shaped round-bottomed means slow rolls and easy to overturn and tender. G, is the center of gravity. Gm, the stiffness parameter of a boat, can be lengthened by lowering the center of gravity or changing the hull form or both. An ideal boat strikes a balance. Very tender boats with very slow roll periods are at risk of overturning but are comfortable for passengers. However, vessels with a higher metacentric height are excessively stable with a short roll period resulting in high accelerations at the deck level. Sailing yachts, especially racing yachts, are designed to be stiff, meaning the distance between the center of mass and the metacenter is very large in order to resist the healing effect of the wind on the sails. In such vessels the rolling motion is not uncomfortable because of the moment of inertia of the tall mast and the aerodynamic damping of the sails. Different centers. The center of buoyancy is at the center of mass of the volume of water which the hull displaces. This point is referred to as being naval architecture. The center of gravity of the ship is commonly denoted as point G or VCG. When a ship is stable, the center of buoyancy is vertically in line with the center of gravity of the ship. The metacenter is the point where the lines intersect of the upward force of buoyancy of IA plus or minus D. When the ship is vertical the metacenter lies above the center of gravity and so moves in the opposite direction of hill as the ship rolls. This distance is also abbreviated as gm. As the ship heels over, the center of gravity generally remains fixed with respect to the ship because it just depends upon position of the ship's weight and cargo, but the surface area increases, increasing me. Work must be done to roll a stable hull. This is converted to potential energy by raising the center of mass of the hull with respect to the water level or by lowering the center of buoyancy or both. This potential energy will be released in order to right the hull and the stable attitude will be where it has the least magnitude. It is the interplay of potential and kinetic energy that results in the ship having a natural rolling frequency. For small angles, the metacenter, me, moves with the lateral component so it is no longer directly over the center of mass. The writing couple on the ship is proportional to the horizontal distance between two equal forces. 
these are gravity acting downwards at the center of mass and the same magnitude force acting upwards through the center of buoyancy, and through the metacenter above it. The writing couple is proportional to the metacentric height multiplied by the sine of the angle of heel, hence the importance of metacentric height to stability. As the hull writes, work is done either by its center of mass falling, or by water falling to accommodate a rising center of buoyancy, or both. For example when a perfectly cylindrical hull rolls, the center of buoyancy stays on the axis of the cylinder at the same depth. However, if the center of mass is below the axis, it will move to one side and rise, creating potential energy. Conversely if a hull having a perfectly rectangular cross section has its center of mass at the water line, the center of mass stays at the same height, but the center of buoyancy goes down as the hull heals, again storing potential energy. When setting a common reference for the centers, the molded line of the keel is generally chosen. Thus, the reference heights are, kb, to center of buoyancy kg, to center of gravity kmt, to transverse metacenter. Equals writing arm equals. The metacentric height is an approximation for the vessel stability at a small angle of heel. Beyond that range, the stability of the vessel is dominated by what is known as a writing moment. Depending on the geometry of the hull, naval architects must iteratively calculate the center of buoyancy at increasing angles of heel. They then calculate the writing moment at this angle, which is determined using the equation. Where Rm is the writing moment, Gz is the writing arm and I is the displacement. Because the vessel displacement is constant, common practice is to simply graph the writing arm versus the angle of heel. The writing arm the horizontal distance between the lines of buoyancy and gravity. At small angles of heel, there are several important factors that must be determined with regards to writing arm moment. These are known as the maximum writing arm moment, the point of deck immersion, the downfluting angle, and the point of vanishing stability. The maximum writing moment is the maximum moment that could be applied to the vessel without causing it to capsize. The point of deck immersion is the angle at which the main deck will first encounter the sea. Similarly, the downfluting angle is the angle at which water will be able to flood deeper into the vessel. Finally, the point of vanishing stability is a point of unstable equilibrium. Any heel lesser than this angle will allow the vessel to right itself, while any heel greater than this angle will cause a negative righting moment and force the vessel to continue to roll over. When a vessel reaches a heel equal to its point of vanishing stability, any external force will cause the vessel to capsize. Sailing vessels are designed to operate with a higher degree of heel than motorized vessels and the writing moment at extreme angles is of high importance. Monohulled sailing vessels should be designed to have a positive writing arm to at least 120 a degree of heel, although many sailing yachts have stability limits down to 90 a degree. As the displacement of the hull at any particular degree of list is not proportional, calculations can be difficult, and the concept was not introduced formally into naval architecture until about 1970. Stability equals GM and rolling period equals, metacenter has a direct relationship with a ship's rolling period. A ship with a small GM will be tend to have a long roll period. An excessively low or negative GM increases the risk of a ship capsizing in rough weather, for example HMS Captain or the Vesa. It also puts the vessel at risk of potential for large angles of heel if the cargo or ballast shifts, such as with the Cougar Ace. A ship with low GM is less safe if damaged and partially flooded because the lower metacentric height leaves less safety margin. For this reason, Maritime regulatory agencies such as the International Maritime Organization specify minimum safety margins for seagoing vessels. A larger metacentric height on the other hand can cause a vessel to be too stiff. Excessive stability is uncomfortable for passengers and crew. This is because the stiff vessel quickly responds to the sea as it attempts to assume the slope of the wave. An overly stiff vessel rolls with a short period and high amplitude which results in high angular acceleration. This increases the risk of damage to the ship and to cargo and may cause excessive roll in special circumstances where the again period of wave coincide with the again period of ship roll. Roll damping by bilge keels of sufficient size will reduce the hazard. 
criteria for this dynamic stability effect remains to be developed. In contrast a tender ship lags behind the motion of the waves and tends to roll at lesser amplitudes. A passenger ship will typically have a long rolling period for comfort, perhaps 12 seconds while a tanker or freighter might have a rolling period of 6 to 8 seconds. The period of roll can be estimated from the following equation. Where g is the gravitational acceleration, k is the radius of gyration about the longitudinal axis through the center of gravity and is the stability index. Equals damaged stability equals, if a ship floods, the loss of stability is caused by the increase in kb, the center of buoyancy, and the loss of water plane area, thus a loss of the water plane moment of inertia, which decreases the metacentric height. This additional mass will also reduce freeboard and the ship's angle of down flooding. The range of positive stability will be reduced to the angle of down flooding resulting in a reduced writing lever. When the vessel is inclined, the fluid in the flooded volume will move to the lower side, shifting its center of gravity toward the list, further extending the healing force. This is known as the free surface effect. Free surface effect. In tanks or spaces that are partially filled with a fluid or semi-fluid as the tank is inclined the surface of the liquid, or semi-fluid, stays level. This results in a displacement of the center of gravity of the tank or space relative to the overall center of gravity. The effect is similar to that of carrying a large flat tray of water. When an edge is tipped, the water rushes to that side, which exacerbates the tip even further. The significance of this effect is proportional to the cube of the width of the tank or compartment, so two baffles separating the area into thirds will reduce the displacement of the center of gravity of the fluid by a factor of nine. This is of significance in ship fuel tanks or ballast tanks, tanker cargo tanks, and in flooded or partially flooded compartments of damaged ships. Another worrying feature of free surface effect is that a positive feedback loop can be established in which the period of the roll is equal or almost equal to the period of the motion of the center of gravity in the fluid, resulting in each roll increasing in magnitude until the loop is broken or the ship capsizes. This has been significant in historic capsizes, most notably the Miss Herald of Free Enterprise and the Miss Estonia. Transverse and longitudinal metacentric heights, there is also a similar consideration in the movement of the metacenter forward and aft as a ship pitches. Metacenters are usually separately calculated for transverse rolling motion and for lengthwise longitudinal pitching motion. These are variously known as AND, GM, T, and GM, L, or sometimes GMT and GML. Technically, there are different metacentric heights for any combination of pitch and roll motion, depending on the moment of inertia of the water plane area of the ship around the axis of rotation under consideration but they are normally only calculated and stated as specific values for the limiting pure pitch and roll motion. Measurement The metacentric height is normally estimated during the design of a ship but can be determined by an inclining test once it has been built. This can also be done when a ship or offshore floating platform is in service. It can be calculated by theoretical formulas based on the shape of the structure. The angle, s, obtained during the inclining experiment are directly related to GM. By means of the inclining experiment, the as-built center of gravity can be found. Obtaining GM and KM by experiment measurement, the center of gravity KG can be found. So KM and GM become the known variables during inclining and KG is the wanted calculated variable. See also References, Ship Stability Kemp and Young ISBN 0 85309 42 4. ABCD Comstock, John. Principles of Naval Architecture. New York, Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. Pages 827. ISBN 9997462556. A.B. Harland, John. Seamanship in the Age of Sail. London, Conway Maritime Press. Pages 43. ISBN 0-85177-179-3. Manier, John, Editor. Technical Committee of the Cruising Club of America. 
desirable and undesirable characteristics of offshore yachts. New York, London, W. W. Norton. Pages 310. ISBN 0-393-03311-2. U.S. Coast Guard Technical Computer Program Support Access December 20, 2006.